I really just wanted to talk about our schools program today and how the schools program taps onto after the coaching training. So as you know, I'm the founder of the Ubuntu Addiction Community Trust and under the trust, we have a mandate to do three things. That's to train people, empower people and to treat people, those people that have been impacted with substance abuse. So our training is under the Ubuntu Academy of Coaching and Training and our coaches go along and they learn the skill of coaching and how they can go into organizations and facilitate facilitate cultural shift. So our coaches go out into organizations, provide coaching skills in the treatment world to improve treatment outcomes. But really what I want to talk to you today is about is our schools program, where our coaches, once they've completed the training, go out into the schools program and work within the schools environment to create peer coaching. So the idea of peer coaching and what our schools program does is we partner with principals and school environments and teachers to work with the pupils in creating peer coaching skills. And a peer coaching skill is where a peer can support someone else in the, the environment that they work in. So our coaches go in and facilitate change amongst uh, the pupils that they can start to support themselves and to come up with the solutions that they have been impacted in. So there's a, there's a, a video that I want to attach to this. which really talks about the, the continuum. So if we look at a continuum like this, and on the axis we have a structure and unstructure, we have known outcomes and unknown outcomes. Our program work started uh, four years ago when uh, we went on to went to work in the community where we didn't know what the outcome is and we didn't know what the structure is and working within the co various communities and various faith-based organizations and various schools we have slowly put together what we now know what the structure is and what the known outcome is so our coaches work in the center here so a coach then would go into an organization, into the schools program, not knowing what the outcome is, and it would be unstructured. And the point of that is that the coach then facilitates what the organizational change needs to be within that school system. So our coaches go out there and they work in schools where they work with pupils and they listen to the pupils and what's needed so they can start to create peer support and educate the kids in the coaching and listening skills that are needed so that they can support each other in the school's environment. So from our perspective, the structure is quite known and the outcome is known however we cannot predict what the outcome is going to be based on that particular school environment so in south africa here that's been working in many different communities based on different faith different needs different resources different outcomes but the skill set has been the same to go and coach and facilitate so our work isn't prescriptive We'll go into a classroom and we'll, we'll create the container and to contract and to work with the pupils and uh, then see what emerges and then facilitate the change. Because it really is a bottom-up approach. And the idea of coaching and the coaching skill is the person or the institution or the organization has the wisdom. So it can be quite an anxiety provoking environment, particularly if the, the, the sponsor is looking for structure and known outcomes. The challenge with that is it's not often not very effective in what is needed as a solution for the community or the organization that we're working with. So in the school's environment, a lot of people, you know, we want to know what the outcome is. We want to know what the structure is. And unfortunately, we cannot give that. 
our programs and trainings are very structured in the terms of this is module one and this is module two and module three and this is a certification process and these are exams and these are the, uh, the skills that we, we require and these are what the measurables are and what the outcomes are based and so on this side of the continuum it really is very structured and we know what the, the underlying theory is and what the outcomes is but as we roll this out you know the outcome is uh, really unknown so if you want to empower communities and get a bottom-up approach this is by most definitely the best way to do that so this is uh, this is how it works so as you go out there and uh, promote our work and sell our work uh, you're gonna have to be able to dance with well we don't really know what the outcome is and it is quite an unstructured approach so I hope that's been helpful if you need more evidence uh, our our IT platform which sits at the top of this which is workplace uh, we can track and monitor everything so the infrastructure and using technology is very very helpful in keeping this safe keeping it measurable and adaptable so we can change it for each specific environment and culture so we've been very successful here in south africa in the uk in australia we're starting something up now in new zealand on the coaches that get trained we then bring people on that you feel that are going to be suitable for the schools program with your students and you guys that we can continuously roll this out and adjust locally to your environment okay thank you very much for watching i hope this has been helpful I want to do is I want to so this is a master class and this is for people who have completed the training and uh, I want to build on module 2 which is the continuum and I want to talk about how we got to this work and how this work works so that uh, you guys can go out there and create environments that uh, create recovery capital yeah. So so uh, I did a, a video yesterday around this, but I want to go into it deeper as part of this training. So if we draw an axis and we put you in the center, Helena. Yeah, there you are. And you showed up yesterday authentically. Okay, great. Okay, so as coaches, we sit in the very center here. A crisis, chaos and conflict and we don't know what's going to happen and we don't know where it's going to go but we do trust the process and know that it works. If someone comes to us and says, well what's going to happen, what's going to do this, we have a structured environment, an unstructured, are you getting this, can you see it? No. Unknown. Yeah. So, so kids when they go to school and they learn a curriculum, it's a very structured environment and you know what the outcome is going to be. Yeah. So it creates a lot of safety for people because, you know, this is what's going to happen and this is what the outcomes are and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, a lot of treatment centers are like that. Prison systems are like that. Yeah, and it creates a lot of safety for people that don't necessarily aren't going to benefit from the work. The other end of the continuum is unknown and unstructured. Okay. I went off on this pilgrimage to Soweto and that's where I met Ocean and the two of us kind of sat there and it was a very unstructured environment and a very unknown environment and we had no idea what the outcome was. We just operated on pure faith and we had a Bible and we had the 12 step book and we had coaching. Oh. This is where our training started. 
yeah so we went on and blah 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 and we've been going off and we worked in the community there and doing other community work and other individuals and putting this so we've developed a training program which is now structured and known and we train people to come up and be their authentic self yeah now now here we have ocean who i partnered with yeah who's a missionary and just kind of goes you just pray <laughs> and i'm not interested in money and i'm just not interested in it i just you pray and you do your work very uh her kokurozashi is about god yeah so she's a missionary and she does this work because it's fucking part of her soul's purpose yeah now if we come up here and uh, I bring Leanne into the picture yeah and Leanne we've really kind of partner with on how to put the material together what the requirements have been here's a number of coaching hours this is what your personal journal looks like this is what people need to do and uh, Helena now has done that and you're coming up with a schools program Helena yeah 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 all right so this side of the continuum yeah is where we've been going out and training people in the structure yeah this is what you need to do and they've been going off and creating their own npos yeah npo or private practice yeah or schools program yeah where we know that it's structured and all that but we don't know what the outcome is going to be so our training and the the theory of everything has become more and more known and more and more structured and if you guys stick around and do the work you become a certified professional recovery coach here you can register with the ICR international coaching register which is a global organization that they've accredited us and if you wanted to you could go right up to masters level yeah our school and our program and the way that we do things sits over here because it satisfies these accreditation bodies because they want to know what's going on and they want the structure in place to do it but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in an environment down here so this is where the real magic is with these communities and people that we're empowering and working with and we've got the technology here yeah, to keep an eye on what's happening there and we've got all the theory and the material here to back up what we do oh fantastic all right so we've been partnering with individuals yeah npos yeah uh co corporate government and as we grow this stuff this is how we're going to cure the world of addiction so the the, the next thing i want to draw on this is the jelly neck curve where people enter into a culture of addiction yeah and so there's that continued use in spite of the negative consequences yeah so use misuse abuse dependence and what you guys need to do is when to refer to treatment what we do is we partner with 
social workers, teachers, doctors, <laughs> psychiatrists. And in the rehab world, we have the external coach and then the internal coach which works within an organization like within a clinic within a daycare center within a school within whatever we've got a schools program we're not sure what the outcome is going to be but this is our structure and we'd like to work with you to create whatever it is that the container wants and what's going to emerge yeah we're going to be working with the children it's going to be very unstructured and unknown in the beginning and it might create some anxiety because people want to know what the outcome is but we don't know but what we can tell you is where this work has worked with people and other NGOs and organizations so when people bring someone to treatment, they say, what's your success rate? What are you going to do? It's like, guys, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen, but we provide a structured environment that if the person takes responsibility for it, yeah, they might get to a culture of recovery. They might start to change their lives. They might not, though. So it really puts us in places of safety in our role and what the role's calling for. So you partner with the principal or whoever. We don't know how we're going to get there, but this is what it would look like. So let's meet once a week. Let's meet with the kids. Let's ask them what they want. Let's come back and learn about what's worked and what hasn't worked. And let's adjust. Let's recontract. Oh, that didn't work. Let's recontract. Oh, okay, we're learning this. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, oh, we've arrived. Here, yeah, guys, I don't know, but I'm going to show up with spiritual principles. <laughs> Honesty, open-mindedness, willingness, faith, trust, acceptance, humility. And we need to build rapport. And when you're kind of honest and open and come with this sort of stuff, it's okay. But what it does do is it freaks out the institution and all the people up here because they don't know how to handle the anxiety and the fear. I want you guys to be able to know and to talk about this environment just to relax these guys over here.